In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now on this 15th Sunday in ordinary time. And we pause now to truly prepare our hearts by listening to the voice of God as he speaks to us and by asking the Lord to fill us now with his grace, his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come now in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Greatly 
Thus you have prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on a good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption and the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him, and he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A sower went out to sow. Those simple words begin one of the most compelling parables in the gospel, a story that has much to teach us not only about gardening and growing, but also about listening, listening to the word of God, being receptive to it, being open to it. 
That can be hard to do when there is so much noise in the world distracting us from God and trying to drown out God's word. But there is something very hopeful to this parable that I'd like all of us to consider today. First, as much as this famous parable is about being open to God and the seeds that he sends our way, it is also about God's eagerness to share those seeds. This is the story about God's extravagant generosity and his boundless love. The sower doesn't discriminate, doesn't pick and choose. He scatters his seeds abundantly, his word, his truth, anywhere and everywhere. He doesn't hold back. He is generously beyond measure with what he has to offer. He knows that it will somehow, some way, reach the richest soil. I was reminded of a story of the great spiritual writer, Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton was a, a jaded, jazz-loving, cigarette-smoking womanizer who drifted from being an indifferent Protestant to being a communist. And then in the middle of his wanderings, he discovered the poetry of the Catholic writer, William Blake. That led him to explore the Catholic Church and eventually to convert. He fell madly, deeply in love with God. Merton became a Trappist monk and writer. He stands today as one of the most influential Catholic writers of the 20th century. Even among the thorns of Merton's confused and complicated life, God's seed found soil, rich soil, to sow. It happens again and again throughout all of history, from the great conversions of St. Paul and St. Augustine to St. Ignatius, Dorothy Day, and beyond. The soil they sprang from wasn't always ideal. The truth is we are a church of rocks and thorns, besieged by birds, and yet amid the vast and surprising garden, God's smallest seed can find fertile soil. His word can and does take root. Which brings me to the other significant point of this parable, and it bears remembering. In this story, the sower doesn't change. The seed doesn't change. What changes is the soil. What changes are the conditions that allow the seed to be planted. What changes is the environment that lets the seed bear fruit. What changes, in fact, is us, you, and me. And we may never know where or how it will happen. So many people's lives have been changed for the better because they stopped and they really listened to God, either directly from hearing God's word or by the example of faith-filled, intentional disciples who, by living their Christian faith, made others look at the trajectory of their life, where they saw the path leading to self-destruction and they saw the path that leads to life, and they made the choice to change. Today, every day, God sets about doing his great work. A sower goes out to sow. He sows in a world tangled with doubt and disbelief, shaded and clouded by forces that doesn't want the seed to grow, that would prefer that the plant be an arid desert. And yet God sows. He sows with abandon, with exuberance, with love. God never stops sowing. Confronted with the extravagant generosity, we confront the question buried in the heart of the gospel today. Are we willing to help God? Are we willing to truly listen, to keep our minds and our hearts open to God's word? Are we willing to clear away some of the weeds and the rocks in our own lives? whatever pride or cynicism or distraction is getting in the way, and give those seeds a chance to grow. Are we ready to receive what the sower so generously wants to give to us? Jesus tells us that the seed is God's word. That seed is small, but it has the potential for limitless growth. We only need to surrender ourselves to him each and every day giving God permission to be the master gardener of our soul and trusting 
that in time we will bloom in new, beautiful and marvelous ways. Amen. And together now we profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Just as the rain comes down to make the earth fertile and fruitful, let us ask God for God's gifts to be showered upon us as we bring our prayers before him today. For the church, may God give us the grace to sow seeds of goodness and tend the soil of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in government, may God grant them hearts of understanding and conversion to the gospel of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and all who work to grow and produce the food we eat, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may God open our eyes and our ears so we can hear his voice in all we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, may God welcome them into eternal rest in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you have granted us knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Grant these requests we bring before you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her unity and peace in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace. Be
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, you gave us your servant, Nelson Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, Inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage to those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant Nelson Baker may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.